What is up, guys? Anybody got any ideas for a new intro? I feel like I've, you know, done that. It's what the fitness time. It's what the fitness time. It's Friday and so you know what time it is. I don't know. Or maybe I should just stick with one and make it like Bruce Buffer where it's like, you know, that's just his shtick line. I'm sorry. You guys aren't my business coach. You're not my therapist. So it's what the fitness time. What the And this week we have a submission from username of Pretty Delicious for You. Here's what happens to your body when you don't eat for 24 hours. Ooh, I bet there's going to be something about fat burning mode, autophagy. I I'm going to guess those two. That's going to be my guess. So we'll see. This has 14,000 likes on it. After the first 12 hours, your body is using stored carbohydrates as fuel, and depending on the time of day, glucose and glycogen levels start to drop. Yeah generalizing, but yes, you will burn through some stored liver glycogen to maintain your blood glucose levels as you get into a fast. Your skeletal muscle glycogen levels are kind of a different thing. Your body tends to be pretty greedy with muscle glycogen, but so far nothing in here that makes me go, mmm. Things that make you go, mm. 18 hours you start to burn fat. You're producing whoa, whoa, whoa. ketones. You don't burn fat till 18 hours into a fast. You hear that guys? You can never burn fat until you've fasted for at least 18 hours. No one who's ever eaten a meal before ending an 18 hour fast has ever lost fat ever. Does anybody actually believe this shit? Fat burning is not an on or off switch. Metabolism, I don't know if you guys know this, is not like a light switch where it's on or off. All the processes are occurring all the time. What matters is the relative rate of fat burning or oxidation versus the relative rate of fat storage. That is influenced by what? Da 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 da! Energy balance. Now some of you might say, well, carbohydrates release insulin and that blocks fat burning. Well, yes, kind of. The problem with that is you're only examining one side of the equation, which is fat burning. There's also the balance between fat storage and fat burning. Now, if you eat a high fat, low carbohydrate diet, you will burn a lot of fat, but you will also store a lot of fat. If you eat a high carbohydrate, low fat diet, you will burn way less fat, but you'll also store way less fat. That is because of the fat you store, over 98% of it comes from dietary fat. Less than 2% under normal dietary conditions comes from what's called de novo lipogenesis, which is the conversion of carbohydrates to fats. What ends up mattering is energy balance because that is going to determine the relative rates of both fat storage and fat burning. Now, what this person might say since they're a fasting person is, well, that's why you just don't eat. Except you have to eat at some mother fucking point. And thus, it still boils down to energy balance. Because if you just don't eat for like three days, what's going to happen? Well, you have to eat way more on the day you actually eat. And they might say, okay, then just don't eat way more and just eat a normal amount. So maybe you're eating 2000 calories every three days. That's just called a low calorie diet. If you just ate like, I don't know, 700 calories a day over those three days, guess what? Your results would be exactly the fucking same. <sighs> After 18 hours, you start to burn fat, you're producing ketones. Inflammation goes down, DNA repair goes up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Inflammation goes down and DNA repair goes up. Citation, please. Inflammation, we've discussed this before, short-term acute changes in inflammation. Yes, they will drop when you are fasting. They'll go up when you feed. Once again, if you have to eat a shitload of food because you've been fasting for three days, guess what? Your inflammatory response is much higher. And if you say, well, then that's why you just don't eat that much more. Same deal with calories, numbskull. You could have just ate 700 calories a day for three days and your overall area under the curve for inflammation would be the same. There are no studies demonstrating that intermittent fasting decreases inflammation independent of the reduction in, what is it? Oh, oh. Calories. 
Once you hit 24 hours, you are still burning fat, producing ketones, improving brain function, only now you are reaching a- Hold up, so you're, you're producing ketones, so now the, the, the conclusion is you're improving brain function. No, ketones don't improve brain function, they just prevent your brain from fucking starving, okay? So why do we produce ketones? Well, on a biochemical level, if you are not eating carbohydrate, you cannot generate enough oxaloacetate to keep the TCA cycle going. And so you start to accumulate acetyl-CoA, which can then be converted into ketones. Now this occurs in your liver. Those ketones can then go in your bloodstream and your brain can use them for fuel. But if your brain has the option of choosing between glucose and ketones, it will choose glucose every time. But yes, ketones will prevent you from being mind fucked. Now you are reaching autophagy, which is like a natural cell recycling full body cleanup. There it is, autophagy, the magic word. You know, five years ago, it was inflammation. Like everything was about inflammation. Now she put that in here too, because of course she's got to tick all those influencer boxes of the buzzwords. But autophagy, physiological process, always happening. If you didn't have autophagy happening because you were eating like a normal person, then you would fucking die. You would just die because you would have all these misfolded, damaged cellular components that would accumulate inside your cells and you'd fucking die. So that means autophagy is happening all the time. Now, can fasting increase autophagy? Yes, but once again, there's no evidence that fasting increases autophagy more than just normal calorie restriction. <sighs> Does anybody have some sedatives? All right, let's see if I can make it through this video. What do you think? Will you try it? Nah, I'm good. And I'm out.